Hello, Internet. It's time for another Wednesday's Serial. Before I start talking about comics, first I want to say sorry about videos I've been making lately. Like last week, I think I stared at my computer and talked to it, but didn't even have it on so I can record or something. I don't know. Um, also, coming up, Comic Fest at Star Fest in Denver. Should you be around? Um, I'll be there. Grab me, say hi if you watch. That would be cool. Let me know. Um, April 20th through the 22nd, um, John Lyman and Rob Guillory of Chew will be there. Zach Howard of The Cape is going to be there. Freddie Williams, freaking Captain Adam Drawer dude's going to be there. And Aaron Lopesti is going to be there. And, uh, and all the local people. And should be fun uh should be a smaller affair than last year um yeah so i'm looking forward to that also stan yan did this little art bit here um if you're unfamiliar with stan yan he does a lot of awesome stuff i would highly recommend checking out the wang it's an awesome comic um also he does subculture which is a webcomic just google subculture and i think it should pop up pretty easily or subculture webcomic there you go that will pop it right to the top and uh it's it's a fun read you know start from the beginning whatever i, I bought some collected editions a while back um help support the guys but it's a fun comic you should definitely check it out so um there was all that and let's move into more of what you people watch for so first up is Age of Apocalypse. I gave the second issue a read and um, it seems like they're working very hard to take any interesting characters and make them boring. They uh, stripped Jean Grey and Sabretooth their powers last issue, which isn't to say that it couldn't be interesting, but um, the way they're playing it, it really isn't. And maybe they're getting to something cool, but it's such a slow build and that seemed to be the crux of this issue and for it to kind of not pay off in any way it's just kind of oh, how do you pay off someone taking away someone's powers you make them interesting they had an idea to lead to it but then they never bring it to fruition and then there's a bunch of other small pieces moving and it just feels like this comic's trying to do way too much and my theory is it's going to lose a lot of readers all too quick and it's never going to get a chance to get there and now of course the amazing spider-man and oh man this issue if you're not reading oh my gosh if you're an avengers fan you should read it anyways because it's basically like avengers take on spider villains but Oh, there's this one great sequence that I saw a page of earlier in the week where um, someone coming out claiming to be Al Gore. I say claiming because the way the art's drawn looks nothing like Al Gore. They get some other figures in there, so I can't draw Al Gore. I don't know. But Spider Man punches him out! Bam! And it turns out to be the chameleon, but still, it's an awesome page. And uh, the rest of it's basically the Avengers versus the Sinister Six, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. I don't know really what else to say here. I mean, it's just... It's just fun. Chu 25 is ugh, amazing as Chu ever is. How they come up with the stuff they come up with amazing and usually usually it's all the food references this time for this whole chapter it's been all about the sports references which never seemed to blend well with comics before you know NFL Super Pro putting weird athletes into cameos for comics but this this works I mean if there's any comic you should be picking up chew Dang. Alright. Daredevil 10.1. Now, two things to this. First, I know a lot of people have been complaining about the point system. You know, like 10.1, 532.3 for whatever comic. You know, the Marvel points. And 
I understand why people are somewhat upset. Not that anyone's too horribly upset, but I mean, the thing is, is they used to throw in negative ones or zeros in the middle of something, and trying to keep track of that is insane. Coming up with just a one-shot, even though it's part of a story, makes even less sense. And frankly, they don't do annuals anymore. This is kind of their way of throwing an extra issue in a year if a comic warrants in there. For a long time, annuals are really spotty as to who get got in who didn't. And frankly, um, a lot of the way they do comics now don't really allow them to break the story, as it were. And none of these point ones are complete standalone issues, which was the initial idea. Especially now that they're past the initial bin, they're just kind of using it as a numbering way to say, hey, check this out if you've been curious, but it's not necessarily so continuity heavy you couldn't figure it out. Um, and that's interesting. And the other thing too is this is a great issue as all the other Daredevils have been, and there's a reason why this year for the Eisner's Daredevils getting nominated for like a pile of awards. So that's cool. Um, yeah, uh, this plays a lot more too if you've been following. Um, Daredevil got a hold of this Omega Drive, which is all this information sounds kind of akin to something they had in Marvel before called the Identity Disc, but I guess this is different. Um, which should be playing into the Omega event thing coming up, which is Avenging Spider-Man, then Daredevil, and Punisher. And it should be an interesting little crossover event. Supposedly those are all written so that you could read any of those stories, and it's a story, but if you read the whole thing you get a little more out of it. They always claim that with this sort of thing, but given the talent on there, and um, given the scope of it, you know, three issues, I really believe this is going to hold true to that, but also considering the talent and everything on there, I think you'd be kind of remiss right now to dodge out on that kind of a thing. Um, I personally pick up Daredevil and Punisher already, so I'm just going to get the Avenging Spider-Man issue, which obviously isn't too much of a leap for me. So, yeah, but um, definitely, of course, love to hear about any pre-thoughts you have on that sort of thing. Um, but definitely, um, I'm sure you've heard it before, Daredevil's doing awesome now, and if you haven't been checking it out, I would highly recommend it. Fatal 4. And it was good, but it was fucked up. Um, yeah, I mean starting to actually get to the crime of the crime comic and there's nothing else that I could say without really spoiling it but speaking of that I was hearing a really interesting bit um basically it was a recorded panel with um Rucka and Brubaker um god what is this the third video in a row I'm referencing word balloon but uh anyways um they had this interesting discussion where um I don't know if it was Rucker or Brubaker actually was saying that they can't write a mystery, but they can write crime. And really, the difference is they just give you who done it out the gate, whatever. Um, but they focus more on the implications and how things move along and how people reach the who done it rather than you just finding it out and crafting a whole mystery around that. And it's interesting because. Um, when you think about that from a craft standpoint, I mean, the only difference is, I mean, instead of like putting all these pieces together and doing it, watching someone figure out when you have the answer is also, is removing that answer, playing around that, especially at the scene of the crime, because you can't give it away, but are you showing it, are you not? Um, much like any Sherlock thing. And then, leading them, giving a little bit of misinformation. That's one thing that I think a lot of mystery stories fall short on is they everything needs to add up. And if there's nothing to kind of lead you down a different path, not only is it easy to figure out, not as compelling, a little too straightforward, it's also, it's a disservice to the idea of a mystery, right? Like you're going to have all this information you need to sort out what's relevant. And people are going to put certain things to throw you off the track, and if the characters, this master detective, can pick up on that every time, 
it it loses some of the uh, panache because if they don't have they don't sometimes come around and find conflicting evidence and then figure out you know what's right then uh, I don't know it doesn't feel like a full fleshed out mystery but uh, this book is none of that um, just a random aside that I thought I'd throw in there so there you go that's what I was thinking about Venom 15 uh, come to the first one after the whole circle of four event thing that was a little lackluster um, coming out it's interesting apparently he's just on the secret Avengers no real explanation of that um, maybe it actually happened the pages of Secret Avengers. I don't know. I'm not going to bother to find out. Um, just seems like a hell of a jump for a character that really hasn't earned a spot with the team to just jump to that. Um, they really played up the addiction angle and you watch his life start to fall to pieces. Um, I mean, some of this had to happen, but part of me is a little sad that we lost the general military bin we're on with the Avengers now. When, uh, it felt like there's some stuff set up with that story that just never came around. Maybe it'll come back, and I'm hoping it does, but I'd be sad if so much time was spent setting that up and to not really have anything come of it. So, but beyond that, um, still a good issue. Maybe not as strong as the series once was, but um, hopefully it'll pick back up, and uh, this was kind of an issue to kind of start setting some things up. Um, also Brock's back and they look like they're setting him up as the hero slash antagonist. So could be cool. And that is it for this video. Um, I am going to do another bit with Avengers vs. X-Men in a separate video because I have rambles and stuff and I want to make it separate. <laughs> um, so be tuned for that. And I will catch y'all later with another comic review.